As you may know, today is the uh, last Sunday before we enter into Great and Holy Lent. It's called Forgiveness Sunday. And there's a story about Christ where he's talking to a thief in front of a crowd. And he's talking to this thief, and he turns to the crowd, and the crowd was like, he should be stoned. And Christ turned to the crowd, and he said, let he who has no sin throw the first stone. And as Christ was standing there, the stone comes flying over the crowd, smacks the thief right in the head. So Jesus turned around and said, Mom! (laughs) So you have to have a little bit of a smile today. Let it sink in. Yes, uh, it's a joke, just so you know. Uh, It's not in the scripture. Uh, Let's just document that. Um, But I wanted you to think about your your approach to Holy Lent and how you see others and how you see yourself. One of the most difficult things that people have to overcome when they come for confession is forgiving, not others, but forgiving themselves. To be able to accept the forgiveness that is offered in the context of the sacrament of confession. So think about your lives. If you are going to confession, you should. Uh, If you have should really plan to uh, filter that into your schedule somewhere uh, so that you can release the things that are holding you back. And sometimes the things that are holding us back is not what we did, but how we continue to grapple and hold on to the sins of the past. That's what the beautiful thing about confession is, is not only is it a sacrament of the church, but it also allows us to take a step away from who we were and allows us to take a new step into who we want to become. The fathers of the church consistently remind us that confession is the way to let go of the old person and embrace the new. But they also warn us that when we approach the end of our life, if we have these sins that are buried on our shoulders, how can we dare approach the kingdom of heaven? That's why confession is so important. And I know what everyone, not everyone, but a majority of people think about confession. It's either lack of awareness or fear of the priest. Lack of awareness is, um, I don't know if I've, I've told you this story, but I'll tell you the story again. I, I don't remember what I said where anymore, you know. But there was this one uh, woman who I went to see on her deathbed. And uh, she, they called me, the family said, this, this woman's going to die, um, you have to go see her. So I get in the car. It was late at night. I get in the car. I drive to go see this woman in this nursing home, and she's dying. I mean, there was no doubt about it. So I read prayers for her, and uh, I gave her communion and unction, and I said, okay, now would you like to confess anything? And she she leaned forward, and she says, your Greek isn't as good as I hoped it would be. And she said that in Greek. And I'm like, is there anything else out of a lifetime of making mistakes that you would like to, how about we make this about you and not about me? Um, And she's like, no. The lady died an hour later. So I'm sure that somewhere that's got to be logged in as a oops moment at the end of your life. But the thing is, we have to be aware of what we're doing and what we're how our behaviors are, so that it becomes about our change and not hoping that someone else is going to change. If you're hoping for someone else to change so that you can change, you're going to be waiting for the rest of your life. It it has to be directed inwardly, our our perception of letting go of things and letting go of the sins that we have. And we also have to realize, as I said, the second part of that is not to be afraid of the priest to whom you confess. A lot of times people will say, well, I'm scared the priest is going to look at me funny. Uh, I was born with a lazy eye, so if you come too close, I'm going to look at you funny anyways. <laughs> so it, that, that's not the point, though. The point is the priest, in sobriety of the priesthood, never looks at someone and says, oh, boy, wow, you're a train wreck, or I can't believe you did that. What's the matter with you? We don't, that's not what it is. You don't go to the doctor and say, you know, I have... Um, I don't know, uh, a bunion. And they say, well, man, what did you do to your feet? What's the matter with you? Did you ever get bludgeoned by a doctor? I sure hope not. And if you did, you're not going to go back. 
So hopefully you were not bludgeoned in, in confession, and hopefully you understand that the priest's job in confession is to help you make those changes in a way that is not painful to you, but in a way that is liberating for you. Not to take just things out of your life, but to replace things good in your life that may be missing by pulling out the, the, the things that are bad, putting in the good, and also honing in on the things that may be your largest problem. St. Basil the Great says over and over, the worst sin that we can have is the sin that we cannot stop doing. So think about yourselves and what you are having difficult, difficulties stopping. And maybe you don't know what those are. And maybe that's the point of having a spouse or a child or a parent so that they can remind you of those things and tell you to, to look inside with kindness and with love and with the hope of change to guide you uh, to a better you. That's what Lent is. Lent isn't meant to break you. It's not meant to see who's, you know, to sift, you know, the Christians and see who the best are to rise to the top. It's not meant to see who, who can fast the most and look the worst, right? I mean, we hear that in the thing, you know, I see people that walk around sometimes and they're like, I'm fasting. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I smell meat. And, you know, it's, it's this whole thing. If that's where you're at, unfortunately, we've already lost the game. But we're supposed to fast in, with a cheerful disposition, understanding it's a discipline for our souls and our bodies, but it's a way to change. And the fast is going to look different for each and every one of you. Some of you have different conditions and different things you have to deal with. I encourage you to talk to me if you have questions about your own personal fasting, how to do it. Some people have never fasted before. Some people are looking to increase their fast. Some people had problems that last year. Some people still have problems this year. Some of you are taking medication. Some of you are hypoglycemic. Some of you have... Uh, uh, you know, intestinal problems and other things. So there's all kinds of issues that we can deal with in a way that will still help you grow. But the, the start of that is not just stopping eating certain foods. It's about looking at our lives and seeing what is controlling us from the outside, letting that go through the context of confession, embracing the forgiveness that God offers to us, and not waiting for others to change. And not waiting for that phone call from someone that's going to say, oh, you know, I've been thinking and contemplating my whole life, and I'm really sorry I did X, Y, Z to you. You're not going to get those phone calls. You probably have been waiting for those phone calls for a long time. In fact, that's why we call other people and yell at them about what we would say to that person if they were to call us, right? We blame, we, we hurt the ones around us by transferring our anger to them and saying, if they call me, I'm going to tell them this. And we talk to that person on the phone who's our friend or our loved one like we were yelling at that other person. You have to let it go. And I know it's hard because, you know, as, as people, and not just ethnic people, but as, as Americans, we always, want the, we always want to win. America doesn't lose, right? And we as Americans never want to lose. We always want to be the winner. What happens? You know, you, you see kids play games and they, they come in second place in a championship and they're crying. Why? Because they didn't get first. Second wasn't enough. Second's never enough for, for most of us. But second place is, is not bad. And when we let go of the, the, the concept of do we have to win the game or is it how we play the game? then we come up with a different perspective. And Christianity is not winning in the world. So if you think you're going to win in the world, you're not going to. Did Christ win over everyone in his life? Absolutely not. That's why he was crucified. But what did he do from the cross? He said, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. And then when he rose from the dead, the people who were against him, did he go back to them? No. He went back to the ones that he had a relationship with the ones who were his followers, the ones who loved him. And the other ones, he said, okay, I let it go. I forgave them from the cross, and now they can make their decisions. That's what we have to do for people in our lives that go against us, that try to hurt us. Just say, you know what? I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to push it aside. And when you let it go, 
There's a liberation on the inside to say, you know what, it's not holding me down. I am not contingently living on the forgiveness of someone else. You can forgive yourself through the context of coming to confession, receiving the forgiveness in the, in the sacrament, and then forgiving yourself and saying, you know what, I made those mistakes, but I'm done. I'm done with them. Or even if you have problems and they continue to recur, that you have help to get through those problems. The church is not here to kill you. Remember that in your fasting. It's not here to kill you. It's not here to hurt you. It's here to help you, to save you, to make you stronger, to make you healthier in your spiritual life so that you can become closer to God and live with him in a way that is beautiful. And the things that we do that are wrong, we have the opportunity to let them go. So let others, what others did to you, let it go. You're not going to get the last word. But go and receive the sacrament of confession. Let that leave from you the things that are bothering you and start anew. Um, I, with that being said, are there any visitors today? I think I saw some new people here today. Are there any new people? Yes. Over there. Where are you from? Okay. Where at in California? Okay. And where at in Franklin? Okay. Oh, nice. Well, welcome. And what's your names? Nice to meet you. Welcome. So, Frank, we live in Franklin, too. We don't live in the downtown area, but we, we're in Franklin. So, welcome. You went from uh, two very different downtown feels, right? You went from somebody, uh, well, you went from Los Angeles to people playing accordions on the street in Franklin, right? Does anybody see the accordion player in Franklin? That's like, I felt like I was in France or... That's, I don't know what music he was playing, but it was, it was fun. So, well, welcome to our church. I hope to see you again here. And if there's anything I can do to help you um, transition here to make this your home, please let me know. Other visitors, I saw their hands here. You can, who, go ahead. Uh -huh. At Vanderbilt? Okay. And where are you from? New York? We're at New York. Oh, okay. Well, nice. Well, welcome. It's nice to see you here. And I've seen you around. So, welcome. Uh, and I hope you enjoy your stay here. Are you here for the week or just a few days? Okay. Well, thanks for coming today. Who else is next? Next row. Okay. Are you at school, working, what? Okay, what do you, what do you, what kind of music? Country music? Uh-huh, oh nice. Well, welcome. If there's anything I can do to help you, please let me know. And um, for those who are new, too, uh, remember to send your, um, an email to the office so we can get you on the mailing list, uh, our email list, so that you know what's going on. Any other visitors? Eddie, you're pointing. To, oh, yeah, you have your hand up. It blends in with the candle that's behind you on the wall. It looks like you're holding the candle. So it's perfect, perfect spacing. Go ahead. What's your name? Alabama? Oh, nice. Well, welcome. We got, like, the whole country represented here. It's like we need the, we need, you know, like when I'm here, like when the president speaks and he has all the state flags behind him, that's what we need here. It's like, it's like a UN meeting. So, well, welcome. How, how long are you here? I, I, I didn't catch the first part of it. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Well, well great. Well, th thanks for being here. It's nice to meet you. Anybody else? Okay, well, are we, uh, we uh, Marcus? Where's Marcus? Is he back there? Oh, there you are. Are, we're doing the coffee hour? Yes. Okay, so we are allowed now to uh, host coffee hour outside. I don't know if it's raining. I don't know what it looks like outside. But um, we have the ability to do that, um, and we're going to be continuing to do that so that some of you can get to know each other and reintegrate with the, the parish. I know it's been difficult. I know everybody's been sequestered and, like, 
in your own little bubbles. And I get that. And you may not feel comfortable with the coffee hour. I understand that too. If you want to keep your mask on outside in the coffee hour, that's fine. Uh, if you want to take a sip or whatever and put it back up, I, I get it. Remain, you know, distant from each other, but try and integrate somewhat too. So try and talk with each other and get to know someone. Um, I encourage you for those who are um, uh, longtime members in the parish and also new in the parish, I, I, hang on one second, um, that um, try and get to new, know someone new, okay? So uh, when you're outside, you, the things are, are made, the ability to, to be socially distant from each other, uh, but we're going to be trying this to see how it works. I understand if you don't want to stay, and I understand if you want to stay. So whatever you feel comfortable with, your comfort level, that's it. But we gotta try and start uh, introducing uh, some things here to kind of move forward uh, in, our, in our community. So uh, that's, that's where we're at with the coffee hour. Yes, you have a question? I did not hear any of that. Oh, Christ is in our midst. Okay, there you go. Now you'll be able to sleep tonight. All right. Yeah, I didn't do it because I, it, we already had the sermon. So this, this was like a post-sermon. So any other uh, questions or anything? I hope you all have a, a beautiful day. We have a baptism today too, which is a great thing to welcome another child into the church. And we, have, uh, we had a chrismation yesterday uh, for uh, a new uh, uh, parishioner here in our church. And we have multiple chrismations scheduled for the next uh, several weeks uh, on different days. So you'll be seeing uh, new families and new members here that have gone through our, our course and our class that will be embracing orthodoxy. So welcome them into our community and I pray that you have a blessed day. Amen.